Good morning, Dixian. Good morning, Dixian. <laughs> Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's my English up to there. <laughs> 오늘 함께 은혜 나눌 성경 말씀은 Today's uh, passage in the Bible that we have in front of us today is 마태복음 15장 Matthew chapter 15 21절부터 28절까지 말씀 되겠습니다. Verse 21 to 28 Matthew chapter 15 verse 21 to 28 우리 담임 목사님이 함께 읽어 주시겠습니다. Pastor Elisha will read the passage for us. Would you rise with me as I read God's word? Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, "Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession." Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may take a seat. I'm from South Korea, as I was introduced. My husband and I, we have been active in ministry, in full-time ministry for over 30 years in South Korea. Thank you. The reason that I'm here today is because I am a mother. The creative Heavens and earth, and that creator God holds everything in his hands. And I believe that God wants mothers in this world to love people. Do you think if I only focus on mothers today that the fathers would be upset? <laughs> Men in this world actually do move a lot of things around. But the woman moves that man. Amen. Amen. Today's title of my message is A Mother's Spirituality. When you hear the word mother, Perhaps this title itself, A Mother's Spirituality, might be new to you. The Lord has been leading me on this journey of spirituality. And I've been training myself by His grace. Spirituality. Salvation is all by God's grace alone through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? But after salvation, God's people must do something. They must have a change in their characters. Their lives have to be transformed. And their world values have to be transformed to godly values. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit allows us to become more Christ-like as we train in spirituality. 
So with this title of a mother's spirituality, I wanted to share God's message with you. Please don't leave before I finish this message. I want you all to be blessed. Amen? In Genesis chapter 2, 창세기 2장에 에, 하나님이 여자를 창조하신 목적에 대해서 분명히 말씀하고 있습니다. God tells us about the reason why God created woman. 그를 위하여. For him. 그는 아담을 얘기하는 것입니다. And that him in that passage is Adam. 아담을 지으시고 아담이 혼자 있는 것이 외로워 보이셔서 God created Adam and he saw that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. 그를 위해서 So for him 그의 갈비뼈를 취하여 God took out a rib from Adam 여자인 하와 저와 여러분과 같은 아름다운 여자를 만드신 겁니다. And he created Eve, a, a woman just like beautiful women in this room like you and me. I feel like many mothers are in this room. And I want you to know that you are at the center of what's going on in this world. Do you feel encouraged that you are at the center of what's going on in the world? How would you respond to this kind of message then? Mothers, you and I, we have been made for him. Made for him. For Adam, we've been made. For our husbands, we have been made. That is the original design of our Creator King. We've been made for him. And that's the creative design of God. And the original design of a woman is that we have been called as Helpers. 제가 싫어하는 음, 운동이 있어요. One thing, one exercise I don't like to do. 여성 상위 운동. Is something that's called uh, women must be always first or this kind of feminism movement. 여성 상위라고 하는 이야기는 when people say women always have to be first. That goes against the order of God. 그러나 however. Don't lose heart, women in this room. You've been created as helpers for sure. But remember this: that women are at a higher level than men. Amen. You see, women are like the level two of creation. Because the latest model, like the latest model of an iPhone, the best comes at the latest, right? Men were created first. Do you know that men have one less 염색체? One less, one less rib? Gene. One less gene? Because Adam was created from dirt. A woman was created from bone. In the Talmud, it tells us of the reason why woman was not created from a hair from a man. And it also tells us the reason why woman was not created from the heel of a man. The reason is clear in the Talmud. The side, the rib, was the, uh, the original piece that God made woman. It shows us that. You see, God created woman from the rib, and that means that when the woman is next to the man, that's when the woman finds the most comfort and peace, and that's where 
the original design was perfect. When the man is most comfortable is is when the man's ribs are touching the spouse's ribs. So it's not about man being up or woman being up. It's about a partnership. It's about helping. It's about loving one another. It's about accomplishing God's purposes on this earth. So the woman has been created with a very important type of material. So the woman is able to help and support the man. But unfortunately, we find in Genesis 3 that the woman is the tunnel through which sin comes into the world. What is woman's sin? She wanted to become like God. She had false ambitions that she wanted to become like God and she not only took the fruit, the forbidden one, but she also gave it to her husband. We are all created beings in God's image. Amen. And we have been given an order by God not to eat from that tree. Why can't we eat from that tree of knowing good and evil? Because the one who is in the middle of good and evil and the only judge is God himself. And when humans eat that fruit of knowing good and evil, we become the center judge of good and evil. And we become people that judge, that's good, that's bad, that's good, that's bad. So why do people why do people say bad things about other people and judge them? See, the reason why we judge other people and point fingers at one another is because we have inherited this sin that enables us to take the seat of God and judge people of their good and evil. Whether you're a man or a woman, it's not about judging others. Please think about this. Am I judging people with my own ideas? Or am I approaching this matter with the values of God? So a woman takes this fruit from the garden, she eats of it and she gives it to the man and God has to give her what she deserves. And the consequence of her sin is suffering. Bearing children, raising children and taking responsibility of them, and always being thirsty for the husband's love. And that's why women have gone down this road of making themselves a product rather than living in the destiny of a masterpiece. Why do women take do plastic surgery on their faces? And why do they not focus more on the inner beauty? 
but want more of the outer beauty. It's because of sin's consequences. It's because women want to be loved by the man. And they, in turn, make themselves into a product. My brothers and sisters of DCN, we are not a product. We are God's masterpiece. And a masterpiece cannot be compared to other things. Because there's only one masterpiece. So don't make yourselves into a product. Because products you can always compare and say this is better or that's better. But a masterpiece is never compared to anything else. What I have, what I can do, I can be satisfied with the gifts and graces God has given me. This Eve that we're talking about now, she's not only thirsty for the spouse's love because of sin coming into her life, but this woman, Eve, she had to live under the insecurity of feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm to blame, I'm to blame. And at times we see many of our female friends having a low self-esteem of themselves. However, there's been a turning point in our lives. Why is that? Because there is a Savior and His name is Jesus who has washed away our sins by His sacrifice on the cross and atoned for our sins. And He's the one who's restoring us into the original design. He is restoring us to Genesis chapter 2 before sin came into the world. And we ought to give glory to Jesus right now. Amen. 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 You and I both, by the blood of Jesus shed for us on the cross, we, uh, we were living as people with so low of a self-esteem. And we were always comparing ourselves to other people. And we lived as a slave to sin. And we, and we were always dependent on other people to give us affirmation. But because of the blood of Jesus, we have been restored. We've been revived in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is believe. Do you believe that you've been restored? It's not because you've done anything right. It's because God's only son, Jesus, has paid the full price for your sin and mine. And that's why by believing in him, we can be restored. If God is speaking to you today by his love, how must we respond then to his love? How will you respond to God of all the love that you've received? We respond by accepting and embracing the calling. I'm so grateful that God created me as a woman. Even if God created me as a man, I would still be grateful. Do you know what that means? I'm 
I want to define a, a woman in uh, three different categories. Uh, a female, 여성, 여성, 아내, a wife, 어머니, and a mother. A female, a wife, and a mother. 자, 우리가, uh, 위해서는, 여성으로서, 여성으로서라고 하는 것은 내가 남편의 아내도 아니고 자식의 엄마도 아닌 So as a female how should we respond in that calling that God has given us? 독립적인 여성의 가치관을 갖고 있어야 된다고 하는 겁니다. You need to remember that your uniqueness as a female is a God-given gift. 여러분들 남편이 없으면 나는 못살것 같아. How many of you think if I don't have my husband I can't live any longer? If I don't have my kids with me, I can't live any longer. 이런 생각은 의존성에서 여러분들이 아직 벗어나지 못했다고 하는 겁니다. Actually, that's not a very healthy way of looking at it because you alone. 여러분들이 아내이기 이전에 여러분들이 엄마이기 이전에 여러분들은 여성이라고 하는 것을 놓쳐서는 안 됩니다. So before God calls you as a mom or a uh, as a wife. Your identity is as a female first. And that's your reason for living. A, a, a spouse, a woman that continues to nag on the husband. A, a woman that continues to uh, try to control their children. Do you know why that phenomenon happens? It's because they're depending on people rather than God. 여성, 여자, 저와 여러분들은 여러분들의 존재 가치를 반드시 찾아야 됩니다. As females in this room, in this house of God, we must find that identity in Christ. Amen. Amen. 그래, 여성들이 세상으로 나가서 어, 직장 생활을 하든 자기의 전문직으로 어, 일을 하든. 계속. 여성의 존재 가치를 찾고 있을 때 자기의 전문직을 가지고 하나님께 영광을 돌리게 되고 세상에서 빛과 소금의 역할을 감당할 수 있게 So when you are embracing the, the female qualities that God has given you whether you work outside the home whether you're a professional you can glorify God through the God-given identity that he has given you 에스더가 여자로서 어, 자기의 예, 가치를 드러내서 하나님께 영광을 돌리고 민족을 살렸던 것처럼. There's a character in the Bible her name is Esther and she embraced her female calling and she was able to save a nation and glorify God. Yes? 여자 자체만으로도 존재 가치가 분명히 세워져 있어야 된다고 하는 이야기입니다. And so like Esther we need to embrace our God-given gifts and graces to glorify him. 이것이 여자에게 허락한 첫 번째 사명입니다. And this is God's calling for the female number one. 두 번째 아내로서의 사명입니다. The second calling is a spouse or a wife. 저는 이것을 갈비대 영성이다라고 얘기를 합니다. I will call that as rib spirituality. 갈비대 영성. Rib spirituality. 자, 갈비대 영성은 돕는 배필의 사명인데 It's about being a helper. 여자가 아, 남편을 세워주는 것이 우리의 창조의 목적입니다. So our goal in life as the rib helper is to respect our husbands. 사랑하는 아내들이여, 여러분들이 남편에게 선악과를 따먹여서는 안 돼요. Beloved wives of God, please don't take the fruit that you're not allowed to eat and give it to your husbands. 수단과 방법을 가리지 않고 성공하기를 바란다든지 Don't spur your spouse on to become productive and, and successful 부정한 물질이라도 많이만 갖다 주면 좋다 한다든지 And don't just say, just get, get me the, all the money you can. I don't care how you got it. Don't say that. 이거는 남편을 세우는 것이 아니에요. That's not respecting your husband. 남편을 세우는 것이 무엇인지를 아는 것이 you need to know how to respect your husbands, and that's what I call rib spirituality. Men often are like this. They feel good when wives do this. 
괜찮아, 괜찮아. It's okay, it's okay. <웃음> You know, even big animals, when you kind of do this to them, and when you kind of do this to them, and you encourage them, and you give them words of affirmation, that's how wives can encourage husbands to go out into the world and conquer the world. I've been in ministry with my husband for over 30 years. I have a philosophy. I have a philosophy that I will never take the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and give it to my husband. That's a promise I made with God early on. It's okay if we have not much food. It's okay if we live in poverty. I want you to be a person that abides in God. Because we're a people that have been called to share the gospel, share good things, and teach people the good news. And the only way I can help my husband in his calling and mine is not to require riches from him and then in turn our souls go to hell. But even if we live in poverty and dire straits, that we would live a life of integrity that would honor God and lead us to heaven. Uh, remember how Adam was created? What kind of uh, thing that he was created by? It was dust. So, and it seems like men have power. But as fast as they rise to power, it's easy for them to deflate. And it's easy for them to feel outcast. It's easy for them to feel downcast as well. Wives. We have a calling. What were we made of? We've made, been made out of a rib. A rib. So the man that was created by dust, we need to be a center point for these people. And we need to help them to fulfill their calling in life. I want all of our wives in this room to be those women who respect and raise up men as men of God. However beautiful your face is after plastic surgery, that won't be able to uh, uh, get all the love from your husband. If you want to be truly loved by your husband, raise them up. Respect them. Be a center point for them. Give them a push when they need a push. Hold their hand when they need hand holding. You may find a man that's so successful out in the world and many people respect this man, but when he comes home, if he's not respected by his wife, that means nothing. So the man who is successful and famous out in the world but not respected by his own wife will never feel that sense of contentment. Alan, is that true, Alan? Yes. Amen, yes. <laughs> so let's now talk about a third point, a mother. 
어머니, 어머니는 하나님의 사랑의 유전자를 받고 이 땅에 보냄을 받았습니다. A mother has received the love DNA from God himself. 생명의 위탁자입니다. Because you've been a steward of a life or lives. 생명의 관리자입니다. And you're a a person that raises a life. 저는 제가 사모이기도 하고 여자이기도 하지만 제가 가장 많이 바뀌고 성화될 수 있었던 것은 이 어머니 사명이었습니다. I myself am a female and I'm also a, a spouse, a pastor's wife. But the most sanctifying work of God I have experienced in my life is as a mother. 제 어릴 때꿈세 가지가 있었죠. I had three dreams when I was young. 나는 반드시 결혼하리라. I really want to get married. That was my dream. 그리고 나는 반드시 엄마가 되리라. And I really want to become a mom. That was my second dream. 그리고 나는 반드시 사모가 되리라. And I really want to be a pastor's wife. 어릴 때부터 이꿈 이야기를 하면 사람들이 웃습니다. And I shared this dream with as many people as I met when I was younger, and they would laugh at me. 모든 사람들이 하는 게 그게 무슨 꿈이야? They said, "What kind of dream is that? Everyone can accomplish that." 그러나 저는 음, 그 사람들의 비웃음에 그래도 당당했습니다. But even with their ridicule, I said I was resolute. 하나님의 아이디어로 하나님의 하나님이 창조하신 나는 가정을 이룰 것이야. I want to raise up a family that's in the image of God. 하나님의 뜻이 하늘에서 이루어진 것 같이 이 땅에서 이루어지기를 원하는 하나님의 소원이 있다면 I understood God's heart that whatever happens in heaven will happen on earth through the family of God. 그 뜻은 어디 이 땅의 뜻은 어디냐면 가정에서부터 이루어진다고 하는 것입니다. And that uh, his will must be done on earth as it is in heaven but through the family of God. 제 사명은 이 가정을 하나님이 허락하신 가정을 숨기는 가정으로 만들어서 하나님의 나라를 건설하는 것이 제 꿈이었습니다. So one of my dreams was to help create a functional, a healthy, holy family for God's glory. 저는 그러기 때문에 에, 육신적으로 제가 배가 아파서 낳은 딸은 하나밖에 없지만 So I only have one biological daughter. 하나님께서 저에게 어머니 영성이라고 하는 것을 주셔서 But through a mother's spirituality God has given 제일 에, 큰 열매로 여러분들의 담임 목사님을 가슴으로 놨습니다. He has given me one uh, better fruit and that's your pastor Elisha Cho. <웃음> 뿐만 아니라 저에게는 많은 젊은 목사님들이 제가 영적인 아들로 지금 케어하고 있습니다. And I'm also a mother, a spiritual mother to many pastors in Korea. 그래서 저는 항상 하나님 앞에 손을 들고 기도합니다. So every time I raise my hands and pray to God. 주님, Lord, 저는 어머니입니다. Lord, I am a mother. 주님, 저는 열방의 어머니입니다. Lord, I am a mother of all nations. 주님, 저는 기도하는 어머니입니다. Lord, I am a mother who prays. 이런 기도를 올려 드릴 때마다 제 마음이 얼마나 기쁨이 있고 하나님이 기뻐하시는지를 느끼게 됩니다. And every time I pray like that, God gives me so much joy and peace. 저는 어머니 영성을 가슴에 품고 기도하면서 So every time I pray with this idea of a mother spirituality. 오늘 본문에 나와 있는 한 여인을 여러분들에게 소개하려고 합니다. I want to introduce you to the Canaanite woman. 성경에는 이 여인의 이름이 등장하지 않습니다. The Bible doesn't mention her name. 그렇지만 저는 이 여인의 믿음이 얼마나 저에게 도전이 되고 얼마나 저에게 귀감이 되는지 모르겠습니다. But this woman's faith challenges me. 오늘 본문에 있는 마태복음 15장에 있는 말씀과 In Matthew 15 마가복음 7장에 있는 말씀을 함께 어우러서 여러분들에게 소개해 드릴 것입니다. And Mark 7 will be uh, the crux uh, of the text. 잠깐 본문을 소개해 드린다면 예수님이 제자들과 함께 사역을 하시고 그리고 예수님의 사역 중에 많은 기적과 이사가 나타났지만 Jesus is in full stride in his ministry. He he's delivering people, healing people, making people whole. 바리새인과 서기관들, 유대인들은 끊임없이 예수님을 쫓아다니면서 예수님에게 시비를 거고 딴죽거리는 것을 보습니다 And you know well that the Pharisees and Sadducees are always after Jesus trying to trip him and trick him. 시간이 없기 때문에 
그전 말씀을 소개하지는 않겠습니다만. I can't go into detail now because of time. 오늘도 여전히 예수님은 많은 병자들을 치료하시고. And even today Jesus is giving and overflowing his ministry to all of us. 피곤한 육체를 가지고 있을 때 예루살렘에서 바리새인과 서기관들이 예수님을 쫓아와서 이 제자들을 비난하며 예수님에게 시비를 겁니다. And even when Jesus was in full stride, these people were just constantly trying to trip Jesus over. 예수님은 그들을 피해서 두로와 시돈 지방 이웃 도시로 옮겨 가시는 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. So in today's text we see Jesus withdrawing to the region of Tyre and Sidon. 마가복음 7장에 있는 말씀을 보니까 And in Mark 7 we read 예수님이 한 집으로 들어가 아무도 went, 모르게 쉬고 싶었으나 He went into a house and he wanted to rest. 한 여인이 예수님을 찾아와 엎드려 무릎을 꿇고 예수님에게 간구하는 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. But there was one woman who came to Jesus on her knees crying out for help. 그런데 그 찾아온 여인은 and this woman 헬라인이고 was a Greek, a Gentile. 스로보닉의 족속의 여자였습니다. She was from a different tribe. She was not a Jew. 마태복음에는 그 여인을 가나안 여인이라고 소개를 합니다. In Matthew we find that she is a Canaanite woman. 이 가나안 여인 여인이 예수님에게 나와서 소리 질러 가로되 주 다윗의 자손이여 나를 불쌍히 여기소서 내 딸이 흉악히 귀신 들렸나이다 라고 소리를 지릅니다. Verse 22 A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out Lord son of David have mercy on me my daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. 주 다윗의 자손이여 라고 부르는 이 여인의 소리를 듣고 Lord son of David she cries out and Jesus hears her. 예수님은 And she and, and Jesus is really surprised by this. 이 여인이 주 다윗의 자손이여라고 소리를 지르는 그 순간 예수님은 아마도 모든 피곤이 가시고 예수님은 긴장하게 되었습니다. In my holy imagination, I feel that when Jesus heard this woman saying, uh, "Son of David, Lord, Son of David," that his fatigue may have been relieved because he was surprised at this woman's crying out. 왠줄 아십니까? Do you know why? 지금도 마찬가지지만 Even today this is the same. 그때 당시에는 유대인들이 예수님을 메시아로 인정하는 사람이 드물었습니다. Because his own tribe the Jews did not want to recognize Jesus as Messiah. 예수님을 죽이게 된 것도 They 예수, want 예수님을 죽이려 한 것도 예수님이 하나님의 아들이다. 내가 메시아다라고 이야기한 것 때문에 이 유대인들이 예수님을 죽이게 된 겁니다. The Jews killed Jesus because they did not want to hear this that I am the son of God. 그런데 이 여인은 예수님을 어떻게 부르나요? But how does this woman call out to Jesus? 주 다윗의 자손이여. Lord, son of David. 이 말은 당신은 나의 주인이시고 This means that you are my Lord. And you are the Messiah. You are my Savior. And this is a proclamation of faith. Even when Jesus' own tribe, the Jews, could not recognize Jesus as Christ, Messiah, this Gentile woman recognizes Jesus and calls out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. This is a miraculous faith. This indeed surprised Jesus. And perhaps Jesus thought in his mind very quickly that I, I just need to test this woman's faith. Let's look at verse 23. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. 예수님을 놀라게 했던 이 여인의 신앙적 고백과는 상관없이 예수님의 태도를 보면 How does Jesus respond to this woman's crying out? 
예수님의 첫 번째 반응을 보세요. The first response is this. 소리를 지르면서 주 다윗의 자손이여라고 소리를 지르는 이 여인에게. Even when the woman cries out, how does Jesus respond? 예수님의 반응은 침묵이었습니다. His response is silence. 아마도 성경에 계속해서 그가 소리 질렀다라고 기록되어 있지는 않지만 이 제자들의 태도를 보면 그 여인은 계속해서 주 다윗의 자손이여 나를 불쌍히 여기소서라고 계속해서 계속해서 부르짖었을 거로 여겨집니다. We can infer from the text because the disciples came to Jesus and urged Jesus to send her away that this woman was crying out constantly. 제자들의 반응을 보니까 Let's look at how the disciples talked. 여자를 우리 뒤에서 소리 지르오니 여자를 보내소서 Send her away, for she keeps crying out. Send her away. 이렇게 제자들이 간청을 합니다. 그때 예수님이 두 번째 반응을 하십니다. Now we find in the next verse how his second response is. In verse 24, Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. 24절 읽어주세요. 지금 읽었습니다. 제자들이 이, 이 제자들이 간청하는 것을 듣고 예수님의 두 번째 반응은 거절입니다. The second response Jesus shows is rejection. 이스라엘 집에 잃어버린 양 외에는 나는 다른 데로 보내심을 받지 않았다. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. 첫 번째 반응은 침묵이었고요. What was his first response? Silence. 두 번째 반응은 거절이었습니다. What was his second response? It was rejection. 확실한 거절이었습니다. It's a clear line. 그런데 25절 보니까 But in verse 25, 이 여자의 반응이 어떤가요? We see the response of the woman. 읽어주세요. The verse 25 reads, The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she cried. 여자가 와서 예수께 절하며 가로대, 주여! 저를 도와주소서라고 어, 다시 한번 간청을 합니다. She's persistent. She comes and kneels before Jesus and says, "Lord, help me." 포기하지 않는 이 여자의 반응에 예수님 세 번째 반응은 어떠신가요? And this woman doesn't give up, so there is a third response by Jesus. 26절입니다. Verse 26 we read, 읽겠습니다. He replied, "It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs." 인격적인 모욕을 하는 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. We can see that this almost seems like 자, 잠깐 여러분들의 에, IQ를 테스트하겠습니다. It seems like Jesus is being very unkind to this woman. So let me just give you a quick test. 첫 번째 예수님의 반응은 무엇이었나요? What was Jesus's first response? Silence. 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 음. 침묵. 두 번째 예수님의 반응은 무엇이었나요? His second response? Rejection. What was his third response? It is insulting. His third response is insult. Think of it like this. The Jews, they, they call another tribe as, as dogs. 여러분들이 지금 사랑하는 그런 개가 아니잖아요. And it's not the the pets that you have at home, by the way. 구약에서부터 어, 이 유대인들은 어, 발굽이 갈라진 짐승은 먹으면 안 되고요. So from the Old Testament, they have laws not to eat uh, certain animals with different hooves. 성경의 그 어디에도 개는 다 부정적인 쪽으로 사용되는 것을. And if you search 있습니다. the scriptures, dogs are always. Uh, showed in a very negative way. And Jesus says to this woman that you're literally a dog. And we all know that the Israelites and Canaanites have a long history of not getting along. Let's see how the woman responds to the insult. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. 
이 여인의 태도를 보세요. 이 여인의 태도는 그럼에도 불구하고 주여 옳습니다. 맞습니다. 아멘입니다. 라고 반응하는 것을 볼 수가 있습니다. So even with the silence, even with the rejection and insult, the woman responds with, Yes, you're right. Amen. It's true. It's true. 그 다음 이야기는 더 멋있습니다. And then she goes on and explains. 개들도 제 주인의 상에서 떨어진 부스러기를 먹나이다. Even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table, Lord. 이 여인은 믿음만 좋은 것이 아니에요. She not only has good faith. 상대가 부정적으로 나에게 말을 한다 할지라도 but even when other people insult her, she's able to turn the insult into a positive thing. Even when people insult her, she's able to respond with a character that is so positive. So the Jews really hated dogs. They, they saw dogs as unfit and unclean. And the Greeks, the, the Hellenists, but the Gentiles of that day really liked dogs and they had dogs as pets. So even when Jesus said, you're like a dog, the woman was able to interpret that and say, well, I can be like a pet dog, right? <laughs> and it's not because she didn't know Jesus' intent. She already knew that the, the Israelites, the Jews, hated the Gentiles. She, she knew full well that was true. But in front of God, she recognized something. And she knew who Jesus was. He knew that he's Messiah, his Savior, his Lord. She was able to profess that she's less than a dog. She is a sinner. Yes, I am a sinner, she said. Yes, Lord, I'm less than dogs. Amen, you're right, God. I, I am despicable. And she's able to confess that. So let's see how Jesus responds in verse 28. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and her daughter was healed from that very hour. Amen. Amen. 이시, 이 여인의 이러한 신앙적인 태도, 인격적인 태도를 보고 예수님이 마지막으로 선포하십니다. Jesus sees the faith of this woman, and she, he sees the perseverance of this woman, he sees the character of this woman, and proclaims to her. 여자여, 내 믿음이 크도다. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. We want to focus on this word great. And in the Greek, uh, this great word is megas. And from this megas comes, this is the root word for megaton, megaton. It's a huge number, right? This woman's faith is a megaton kind of faith. Do you feel challenged by this woman's great faith today? How did this woman be called a woman of great faith? It's because she had faith in the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the basis of a megaton faith is knowing God. Is believing in the fact that He created the heavens and the earth. 
비록 우리가 하나님을 배신하고 하나님을 배교해서 하나님 앞에 범죄를 하기는 했지만 And though we have rebelled against God with our pride and turned against him 독생자 예수 그리스도를 다시 보내시고 God has given us his only son 하나님의 창조하신 창조 인간들을 책임지시겠다고 하는 그 예언의 말씀을 믿었다고 하는 것입니다. And because this woman believed in the prophecy that God will send a Messiah to save them from their sin. 구약의 예언서들을 보면 And when we look at the prophecies in the Old Testament. 내가 다시 너희들을 회복시켜 주리라. I will restore you, the Lord God says. Many a time. I will send you a son. And I will atone for your sin. And I will restore you to your original design. And those are the prophecies of the Old Testament. And this woman has never met Jesus before. And she's never followed Jesus before. But she believed in the word of God. She believed in the prophecy of God. She met the word of God. And when Jesus stood before her, through the Holy Spirit, she recognized this is the Messiah. And she received that confidence from God. My beloved, Do you want to experience these miracles that this woman experienced? Do you want Jesus to say to you that you have great faith? Then you must meet the triune God through the word of God. You must believe in the truth of God's word. And when you believe, you will see miracles happening in your life. In Mark 7, Jesus responds to the woman like this. Mark 7, 29 reads, Then Jesus told her, For such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. For such a reply. How will you show your faith then to Jesus? Uh, I would love to speak to you in English, but that's also a good thing. God has given me a gift that when I talk to people, that I can actually see how much faith they have in God. What Jesus wants to see is your faith being expressed through words and proclamation. You need to be able to proclaim and express your faith. 다시 말하면 여러분들의 말을 보면 믿음의 척도를 알수 있다고 합니다. In other words, when I hear you speak, I know how much faith you have or have not. 마가복음에는 이렇게 얘기하잖아요. 이 말을 하였으니 For such a reply, Mark says. 자기의 죄를 인정하고요. We need to be confessing of our sins. 조상의 죄를 인정하고요. We need to know that we've inherited sin. 예수님이 아니면 안 된. And we need to know that Jesus is the only person that can wash us from our sin. So this person, this woman of great faith, does not uh, give up hope when there is silence from Jesus. When there is rejection from Jesus, and when there is even insult from Jesus. And you need to remember in the text, this woman uses the word Lord three times. Even when you feel like Jesus is being silent on you and is deaf, this woman calls out, Lord! 예수님이 
Even when you feel like Jesus is rejecting you and drawing the line, this woman of great faith cries out, Lord! Even when Jesus calls this woman a dog and insults her, this woman calls out, Lord! Now look and apply this to your lives. When you pray, do you feel sometimes that God is silent towards you? Do you sometimes feel like God is rejecting you and not giving you your needs or wants? And God would never do this. That's out of character of Him. But, but even when you feel like you've been insulted by God, can you? Can you, like this woman, draw closer to God by saying, Lord, Lord, and Lord? Don't you worry about God. You worry about the faith that you have and express. It's because you give up so easily you don't experience the miracles of God. And we are all challenged by this woman's megaton faith. And Jesus recognizes that faith. She also had one very important motivation to pursue Jesus because she was a mother. See how this woman approaches Jesus? She's coming on behalf of her daughter who is suffering terribly from demon possession. But she says to Jesus, have mercy on me. It's not just the, the problem of the child. She takes it upon herself because she's a mother. And she accepts the child's problem or suffering as her own. And she says twice in the text, Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, so that my child can be freed. Do you have problems in your home, maybe with your children or grandchildren? Do you want God to unlock their hearts so that they can be returned and reconciled to God? Then today we need to be resolute in our mother's spirituality and father's uh, spirituality. We need to take on our children's problems as my own. And that's the calling of a mother. That's the love that flows from the cross. Jesus did not help you to cause any sin. Jesus is never part of any kind of sin, and yet he still went to the cross for you. And he atoned for our sin on the cross. It's the same with our children. A mother's spirituality is like this. A father's spirituality is when our children go uh, another way. When our children stray, that's when the parents need to repent. It's not their problem. The parents need to identify what kind of sin did I inherit to them so it's my problem, not theirs. Don't, don't compare your children to other people. Why aren't they good like this, good like that? Don't compare them. If you do, they become very lonely children. 
God has given you a stewardship over these children. Even if they have mental problems, even if they have emotional problems, or even if they have physical problems, you need to approach them with the love of the cross. And you need to embrace their problems as your own. Like this woman. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. I repent of my sin. I repent of the sins of my ancestors. I repent of all the inheritance of sin that I've received. And in Jesus' name, I want you to heal my child. So raise your children with the love that flows from the cross of Jesus Christ. This woman's faith is based on the principle of the cross. A mother's spirituality is based upon the cross of Jesus. Is that an amen? Thirdly, how do we find out this woman has megaton faith? She was a persevering prayer warrior. Even in Jesus' silence, she didn't give up. Even when he doesn't respond, she doesn't give up or lose hope. Do you love your children? Then why do you give up praying for them? Why do you lose faith and lose hope? Why are you depending on other things but God? Even if you feel like Jesus is silent, Jesus is not dead. God is not dead. Even in the midst of silence, persevere in prayer. 여러분들이 잘 알고 있는 어거스틴의 어머니 모니카 여러분들 잘 아시죠? Do you know uh, the church father Augustine and and his his mother Monica? 아들이 13년 동안 방황하고 있을 때에 This son called Augustine was out in the world for 13 years doing just living life. 날마다 성전 뒤에서 눈물을 뿌리며 20년 동안 기도했더니 This mother sat at the back of the sanctuary and prayed for 20 years. 아들이 돌아오는 기적을 체험했습니다. And she experienced the miracle of this son Augustine to come back to Jesus. 여러분 예수님이 여러분들의 문제에 침묵하신다고 생각하지 마세요. Do you think Jesus is being silent to you right now? 포기하지 마세요. Don't give up. 두 번째로 이 여인은 거절과 무시 속에서도 상처를 받지 않았습니다. Even in the midst of rejection, this woman we can see from today's text, she's not hurt by it. 저도 목회를 하지만요. Uh, in ministry, 성도들이 안타까운 것이 너무 쉽게 상처를 받는다는 것입니다. There's a lot of times when I see people they receive hurt so easily. 여러분 상처를 받으면 Remember this, where there is hurt, when you are hurt, then you leave room for the enemy. Do you think your, your pastor looks down upon you? That will never happen, of course. But even if you feel like that, don't get hurt. And the reason why people get hurt is because there is a void that must be filled with the word of God. Even through rejection, this woman does not get hurt. Because she had muscles of the word of God, muscles of scripture. 
You need to make some muscles, build up your muscles with scripture. And when the enemy comes, they bounce off you. Don't receive hurt. And when you receive hurt, you know, dogs come and, and they'll, they'll lick your wounds. And Satan will come in and try to build houses. And the evil one will come in to steal, kill, and destroy. Do you want to, do you want to have victory in faith? Embrace the word of God and build muscles of scripture. This woman probably had the words of Isaiah in her mind and in, in her heart. And she knew the prophecies of old. So she did not retreat or be hurt from Jesus' rejection. A praying person will not get hurt. Please don't get hurt. Amen? Even in the times of when Jesus insults the woman, this woman does not retaliate. She has a character. She has a content of character. The, the woman received insult and maybe uh, you think that she could have gotten angry and wanted to retaliate but that was not the case. It's not because she had less knowledge. Mark, in uh, chapter 7, uh, verse 26, describes the woman as a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. So that means she was pretty well educated. And she came from a lineage that had a lot of prestige. And if she wanted to retaliate because of the insult that she received, she probably had some choice words herself. She probably had a lot of knowledge because she was a Greek. She came from a good household, so she had history. What about Jesus? Jesus was a carpenter. He has no knowledge. Jesus was a carpenter's son. So who is he? So this woman had the arsenal to attack Jesus. But because she knew who Jesus is, she did not. Even when people insult you, you feel angry, right? You feel like, why are they picking on me, right? You, you want to retaliate real bad, right? We learn from today's text that we want to respond with faith, not retaliation. I'm going to close the message in a couple of minutes. The faith of the Canaanite woman. A faith that Jesus said was great. And from her faith, Jesus releases her daughter from demon possession. Miracles come to mothers who pray. Wherever you see a powerful man or woman of God, there's always a person praying behind them. Augustine says this, Lord God, I've become your son because I have had a praying mother. Amen. Amen. John Wesley would say this, 
어머니의 기도가 나를 창조의 목적대로 창조의 목적인 나를 찾게 만들었다고 고백을 하는 것을 볼수 있습니다. John Wesley said because of my mother's prayer I've been restored into the original design and live out my destiny. George Washington do 이렇게 얘기를 하죠. George Washington even said. 나의 과거도 my past 나의 현재도 my present 나의 미래도 my future 나의 모든 삶의 어머니의 기도가 안 들어온 것이 없습니다. All of my life, my past, present and future. Everything has been influenced by my mother's prayer. 어느 날 조지 워싱턴 어머니의 생일날 On the birthday of George Washington's mother. 파티장에서 많은 사람들이 묻습니다. There was a big party and many people asked her. 어떻게 이렇게 훌륭한 아들을 키울 수 있어요? How did you raise this wonderful man, George Washington? 어머니가 이렇게 대답을 합니다. The mother responded. 나는 아무것도 한 것이 없습니다. I've really done nothing. 다만 내 아들을 하나님 앞에 복종하게 만들었을 뿐입니다. But I have done one thing. I've made my son submit to God. 사랑하는 어머니 여러분. Let me talk to all the mothers right now. 사랑하는 아버지 여러분. Let me talk to all the fathers in this room. 기도하는 부모에게서는 a praying parent 절대로 그 자식은 망하지 않습니다. Your children will never go astray. 우리 한번 다 따라서 해 볼까요? Let's say this together. 아버지 어머니 각자 자기 정체성을 가지고 어, 따라 하겠습니다. Please repeat after me. 주님! Lord! Lord. 제가 어머니입니다. Just the mothers, okay? I am a mother. <laughs> okay, fathers. I am a father. Chunim. <laughs> Lord. I will be a praying mother and father. Chunim. <laughs> Lord. I will be the father and mother to all nations. Prayer is sufficient. Prayer works. Prayer works. 여러분들의 가정에서 하나님의 뜻이 이루어지고 하나님의 나라가 건설되기를 예수님의 이름으로 간절히 축복합니다. So these are my concluding words to you. As God's kingdom is established in heaven, may his kingdom be established in your families. And through your families, may nations be blessed. Amen.